Hello and welcome to Moodle Basics Level 1. My name is Michael Coleman and I'll be your instructor. I'd like to start today by just giving you a little basic overview of what a Moodle site contains and how you can custom tailor it to meet your learning needs of your students. Um, let's start with the name Moodle. Moodle stands for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. And essentially what that boils down to is that you can add blocks of information. For example, you'll see on the right hand side of my screen I have messages, online users, latest news, upcoming events. Um, these are all custom. You can add these or remove these. There are several others that I'm not currently utilizing that I could if I wanted to. Um, all of the material contained within the site, any banners, any images can all be changed um, to your liking. Uh, let's take a look at the general organization of the site. Um, as I described, um, on the right-hand side, you can see we have what we refer to in Moodle as blocks. Um, I can add or remove these blocks simply by using the Turn Editing On button in this top right-hand corner. I'll show you an example of that very briefly. By clicking this button, you'll notice that each one of these blocks now has new options added to them. Uh, for example, we can move, edit, delete, hide. Uh, we can also minimize these docs as well. And if I scroll down to the bottom of my doc list, you can see there's the option to add new blocks. So these are other types of blocks that we could add. Quiz results, remote RSS feeds, uh, a people's block, several different things to choose from. Now, it's important that you don't get overwhelmed when using the site for the first time. Um, you can always start with the basic settings that it creates for you when you log in for the very first time. Uh, this is just letting you know that you can change these things. You could change the order of them, pretty much anything you'd like. I'm going to turn editing back off for a moment and you'll see that now those headings have gone away and this is basically how a user would view my site. Now in the center of the screen you can see that we have what is referred to as the topic outline and this top block that we have here in the center is our static topic window. What that means is that whatever you put in this general portion will always be there. That'll be at the top of all lessons. So um, in mine it just simply has the title of the course, a little bit of information about the course, and some introduction material. You'll see as I scroll down each one of these topics becomes numbered, starting with number one, which in this case is lesson one, creating a course, lesson two, using blocks and organizing your course, lesson three, course resources, lesson four, course activities, backing up a course, and then finally lesson five, which will host some additional advanced materials. Most of your work in your Moodle course will take place in the topics outline and this is where you'll add things like activities, materials for your students, um, any type of assessments that you'd like to give them. Now there are a number of different ways that you can change the look and feel of your site. Just to give you a quick example, I'll show you two other sites that I currently have active. Uh, this is an American Government Honors class and you can see that I've kept this site very clean. It just has a standard white background with a very slim bar at the top. Another course is an advanced placement government class. You can see that this one looks uh, visually a little bit different. It has a different background to it. Um, you'll see that in addition to having blocks on the right hand side of the class, you'll see that there are also blocks on the left hand side of the class. While I'm in this class, let me just give you a quick little tour so you can see what an actual working class looks like. Um, again, in this one, in my general topic outline at the top, I've chosen to give some general course information, for example, a syllabus, course links, um, a video series that we use for the course, and some rubrics for their papers. And then you can see this is what a uh, typical topic might look like. In this one, I've set up this class based on units. So you can see Unit 1, Underpinnings and Documents of American Government. I have some general material at the top for them, some journals that I created uh, for the students. These are student uh, center journals where they'll uh, go in. They're essentially just forums. Resources for the students. This includes things like the presentations that I give in class. 
These are online assignments that I've created for the students to complete. Um, under media, I've posted a link to a couple of uh, web video series that I'd like for them to watch. I've even created a couple of games based upon some vocabulary words that I added to the course. And finally, when they're all done with the unit, they can take the unit one exam. Going back to the Moodle Basics course, uh, one of the final pieces that you'll need to understand is, in this case, it's on the left-hand side here, and you'll see it listed as Settings and Navigation. Navigation, of course, is just what you think it is. It allows you to click through your course and get a quick shortcut to any activities or lessons that you've created. Settings is where uh, you'll do things like edit the look and feel of your page, um, change the number of columns, um, set up the users in your class, groups if you'd like to do that, view students grades if you're using uh, graded activities, and do things like back up your course. Anytime that you'd like to make a change to the basic topics or to the blocks on any page, it's as easy as going back and turning editing on. And in this case, you'll see that once I've turned editing on, just as before where you see all these new options on the blocks, you'll also see that every assignment that I have listed has similar options. Options to move it, indent it, edit it. Uh, this is a duplicate feature, get rid of it all together. Or if I want, I can simply hide it so that it's not visible to students. And that allows me to then unhide it at just the right times for them. Now, if you're wondering how I got all this content into the course, it's as simple as going to whatever topic you'd like. For example, let's say I wanted to add some new material to lesson one, creating a course. I simply go to topic one, I scroll down, and I select either add a resource or add an activity. And you'll see that it'll give you several things that you can add. Um, all of these items will be addressed in a later topic. So I'll save that for then. For now, uh, we're going to assume that everybody has set up their basic site. Um, if not, you want to go ahead and follow along with Activity 1, Creating a Course and Course Name. And at that point, we'll essentially be walking you through the Edit Settings screen. Anytime that you'd like to change the basic functionality of your site, you can simply hover over Settings and select Edit Settings, and that'll bring you back to the main course editing screen. And here you can see this is where I've given the course name, Moodle Basics Level 1, the course short name. The short name, by the way, uh, whatever you enter here is what will show in what we refer to as the breadcrumb list. And you'll see this little bar displayed at the top of any page within Moodle. A brief course summary. I've chosen the topics format, which is the most popular. I have five basic topics to cover, so I selected five from the list. But if you're doing this for a classroom that, say, had 22 chapters, you could simply select 22. Or maybe you wanted to do it over a course of eight units, you could simply select eight. Um, this class uh, was enabled on January 19th. Some other options that I like to include, I select yes for show gradebook to students. Um, I generally lower the upload to five megabytes to keep the bandwidth under control for the site. Right now I've not selected a theme. So the way that you're viewing the site is the default view. You can see these are all different themes and you can feel free to go through and experiment with these um, to your heart's content. Uh, for now, I'm gonna leave this as do not force. For group mode, I would select visible groups and yes under force group mode. Default grouping, you can leave as none. Make sure the course is available to students. Under student progress, we want to make sure that we're on enabled, control via completion, and that we have a check in the completion tracking begins on enrollment. This will set you up for the more advanced course. If you start out with these options enabled, um, then if you decide to take the Moodle advanced training course, um, you'll be on the right path. When you're all set, you simply scroll down and click Save Changes, and it brings you right back to your main screen for your site. To recap what we've gone over, we've simply described the difference between blocks, which are shown on the right-hand side of the screen, 
the topic section, which is where all of your course content will actually be visible. And we've taken a quick look at the settings, edit settings screen, which is where you set up your screen for the first time or make changes to the course at a course level. I hope this video um, has given you a decent introduction to the service. Uh, please note that for this course, as you move through the course, each activity um, will be followed by some sample material as well as a brief video overview of the various topics. In some cases, it may be easier um, for you to watch the video overview prior to completing an activity and then using the step-by-steps um, within the activity in order to duplicate this on your site.